people have traveled on the Albany River and the rivers that feed into it for as long as people have lived in what we now call Ontario. From its headwaters in Lake St. Joseph, the Albany runs 1,000 kilometers along the edge of the Canadian Shield and into the James Bay lowlands. Our journey is shorter and begins on the Kabanekagami River near Colstock Reserve. Even though we travel in a generally northern direction, we say we will travel down to Fort Albany. It is a journey of 400 kilometers or two weeks, but these measures of time and distance fail to truly describe the trip. The beginning of any river trip is exciting. As the miles stretch before you, an imagination becomes real. The first few miles have fast water and new channels from the spring breakup. Elders from Colstock have joined us as guides. In the early days of Canada, as European interests looked for entry into this vast territory, the Albany River was considered to be the second most important route to the west and north because of the access from Hudson's Bay, second only to the St. Lawrence. The first fort was built in 1674. In all, a dozen forts were built over the next 250 years. Later, trains brought goods to the Pagua River to be barged and brought by Canada's first York boats. Gosland has traveled the river many times, and twice before with rafts. This year's versions are bigger and more comfortable, and there are two. The rafts may be new, but the reasons to make the trip are timeless and understood by anyone who has gone before. steering only. The current will do the work of bringing the rafts north. And always there is the sky, the land, and the river.
At the junction of the Kanagami and Kabanekagami, a Cree village grew around a trading post that has long ago returned to nature, except in memory. In 1942, people started moving up the river because the fur trade at that time was uh, was uh, getting decreased. Eh? People, there was nobody around it to trap, and everybody else was moving up the river, the Pagua River. So eventually, the Hudson Bay closed down because there was no no more treat uh, furs around here. Eh? Oh, that's uh, Angus' uh, uncle. Yeah. Angus Ferris. Angus and your uh, uncle. My, my mother's brother. Very yeah. Yeah. This is very This one is uh, in the family one. Where's the other one? Where's the other one? Oh, that's you. My sister. Yeah. That's Angus' sister there. Christine Wesley. Yeah. I think you can worry what when you get sick, you just have to die. You just die one by one. Eh? There's no doctor in her. There's no doctor. So all in a lazy place, isolate, isolated place there. Yeah. Can do nothing. She had to watch people dying. There's my dad here. My mother. Elders from Callstock will return from here, and the rafts, now tied together and over 50 feet long, will make their own way. Side trips along the hundred or so smaller feeder creeks and rivers open new worlds.
The pace is the river's pace, and the path is the river's. But the weather can change our view in an instant. Spring storms are not uncommon, but the comforts of the raft make even cold weather into good weather. The snow creates an ancient and silent pattern on the land and somehow makes all appear even more beautiful. At the junction of the Kenogmi and Albany rivers, Fort stood over a hundred years ago. Legends and stories reach us of battles, hardship and perseverance. But these are almost lost in time, and indeed the sites are very difficult to determine. This is also a place where the Cree gathered, rested and in later years signed a treaty. It is the place where we wait to see if the ice jams still exist behind us, upstream from the forks. Anyone who has seen the spring breakup knows that the walls of ice that form and break and reform are terrible in their power and our rafts would be no match. I'm Cake. Um, Canadian. <laughs> when all looks clear upstream, we can enter the Albany River and begin traveling in a more easterly direction. Elders from Port Albany, who have been at their spring hunting camp for two weeks, now join us. He's telling us that in the old days, people lived all along the shores. They never stayed in one place for long, but moved from one place to another as the seasons changed. They would travel to one of the posts, either upstream or down, and travel many miles. His grandfather's time was spent in this way. Oh, machinist, 
In the days before there were schools, people would trap almost all year long. People lived all along the shores. When the residential school came along, people would have to leave their children at school. The children might be left behind for a whole year. When he was a child, he traveled with his family to Fort Albany just to attend church services and to visit. In those days, they paddled or pulled their canoes along the shore. The supplies they needed came up the river along the same route as these rafts. A steamboat pulling many barges brought the goods. In winter, people used dogs and toboggans to go to the post. They trapped fox mainly. There were so many that their trails were like rabbit trails we see today. Now the government designates where people can trap. They say this is good for the people, but it is not. It is only good for the government. Our grandfathers made a mistake in signing a treaty that they did not understand. If they had refused, all this land would still be ours. Now it is too late. It seems the white man always knows how to pull a fast one on us. Today, people don't use the rivers. It is only used in the way that people down south use a highway, as a way to get from one place to another, but no one stops anymore. This used to be a big settlement. The people lived mostly in tents, but there were buildings for the Hudson's Bay store and the manager. Remember a man from Fort Albany, Xavier Kustachin. His leg had been amputated. But this never stopped him from making his living from the bush. He could walk 50 miles pulling a toboggan. Today, the young people cannot do anything in the bush. They don't know where to go. They would rather make their living in the easier way, with a pen or from welfare. They live just like the white man. After they finish high school, it is too late to learn about the bush. Life in the bush is hard and there is much to know in order to be a good trapper. We used to make everything for ourselves.
We met Chief Ed Matat at a spring hunting camp. He thought that a raft was a perfect way to bring the skidoos down to Fort Albany. Now the current is very strong. The last ice from breakup is high up on the bank. The trip is nearly over, and the wood from these rafts will become lumber or foundation logs for houses. To travel on the river once is to understand in a small way the love that the Cree have for it. It would be good to keep at least this river as it is and has always been. Man should pass by in his time, but the river should remain. Thank you.